located in Baltimore, Maryland's historic Camden Station, adjacent to the home of Major League Baseball's Baltimore Orioles, is Jeppy's Entertainment Museum. This gem of Baltimore is the brainchild of comic book distributor, publisher, and longtime comic fan, Stephen A. Jeppy. And everything in the museum comes from Mr. Jeppy's extensive personal collection of comics and collectible memorabilia. Devon Sanders visited the museum recently to see what the museum has to offer. Let's take a look. We're standing here in downtown Baltimore at Jeppy's Entertainment Museum. We're going to go inside and we're going to see some really awesome things. And now we're inside at the Jeppy's Entertainment Museum with Gina Jeppy. And you want to take a tour? Yeah, I would love to show you around. All right. Um, this is my dad's private collection, as you may or may not know. It's about 30 years of his collecting, so we do have certified tours here at the museum available from our docents and our curator, but the tour that I like to take is a little bit more personal, so I'm looking forward to showing you guys around. All right, very good. So the easiest place to start is our Story in Four Colors room, which okay. the locals kind of just call the comic book room. Okay. So that's going to be up here on the left-hand side. Right. And if you're a comic fan at all, this is probably going to be your favorite spot in the oh, museum. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so what have we got here? In here, we have our prestige case. This is the comic book room, starting first at our prestige case, which is where we house the Action Comics number one, which was the first appearance of Superman, and Detective Comics 27, which was the first appearance of Batman. Over here, we have our collection of big little books. These were huge in the 30s. They were 10 cents a piece. And what's really unique about these big little books is this collection right here was actually purchased from Whitman Publishing as all their file copies, which means that these books have not only never been sold, they've never been read. The bindings haven't even been broken. So um, these were, as I said, very popular. They were the largest 10 cent sellers until about 1938 when a character was introduced via comic books, which you may know, named Superman. So right. Superman kind of pushed the little big books out of their popular spot for a while. Well, what's great about this room is you, there's really so much to see that you could stay in here for hours alone just seeing what the comic room has to offer. Mm -hmm. But over here in this case, you're going to see what some would think is perhaps maybe part of the 20 most boring years in comic history. And the reason they say that it's not anything against the characters, because there's characters you'll recognize like Batman and the Hulk. But what it was is when the comics code was there and this, that little stamp you see up in the upper corner, the little white stamp, that is when they were basically regular regulating comics, kind of like an FCC would, telling them what they can and cannot put in comics. And a little interesting fact is, is that um, Stan Lee was uh, the creator of Spider-Man, of course, along with many other classic characters, right. did an issue of Amazing Spider-Man, and Spider-Man's, or Peter Parker's friend, had taken drugs, and the comics code was completely against the issue. They would not put their authority on it and their approval, and so they published the comic even without it, and it was a huge success, and now it's a very classically known comic. But they kind of realized at the time that we actually don't need to have this approval okay. in order to be able to publish these comics and let them sell well. So the comics code is something that's kind of dissolved along the time and as you go through the timeline you'll see most issues don't even have it after a certain period. One of the great things about this museum the way it's laid out is uh, it's definitely a preference of my dad that he did not want it to be gallery style imaging down the wall meaning that everything was at your eye line all laid up symmetrically so instead he wanted it to be where as you walk through you have to look all over the place to see things and that's exactly how it is so as you walk through here you'll see movie posters you'll see uh, animation cells and actually it's funny because right over here if you come with me okay. There's a Oswald the Rabbit poster, and the funny little story about Oswald the Rabbit is it was originally supposed to be a big character that would launch Disney, but they had a bad business deal and they lost the rights to Oswald the Rabbit. So that's when they created Mickey Mouse as their second choice, which of course we know worked out very well for them. Okay. But not that long ago, they actually got back the rights to Oswald the Rabbit in a deal with Disney, who owns ABC, releasing sportscaster Al Michaels to NBC. So it was kind of funny to think that Al Michaels was traded for Oswald the Rabbit, to kind of put it, you know, in loose terms. So it's a fun little character to tell that story about and that people usually recognize but don't know the history behind. So. Right. And personally, I think that um what, Disney, they want out. <laughs> yeah. We're in our expanding universe gallery right now, and Star Wars is, to me, what's unique about it is it's not just a fan base, it's a culture. People who love Star Wars 
have loved it, even if they weren't born when the first movie came out, but just big lovers of it. So this is definitely a popular room in the museum. And one of my favorite pieces in here is the Revenge of the Jedi poster, which is the original poster from the movie um, before the title was changed to Return of the Jedi. And the idea was is that revenge was an emotion unbefitting a Jedi. So they changed it, but it's cool to see the piece. So it was... Uh, um, a really cool piece to have in here because people see it and they're like, I don't remember a movie called Revenge of the Jedi right. because it didn't exist. It uh, changed titles but before anybody even realized it. But some very cool pieces of movie memorabilia in here, toys again that you'll recognize. And then even as toys progressed into things such as Happy Meal toys and iconic characters from like, you know, fast food restaurants. Like everybody was really getting in on the game that they wanted to create a character that would live on. And they have from Burger King to Ronald McDonald. They're all represented in here as well. What I love about pop culture collecting is, is it is such a huge part of our country's history to look at things and be like, yes, this related to this time. Or I remember when this was going on in the world and I had this particular item. But I think it really, if anything, emphasizes that the more creative you are, the more successful you can be because all of these things were creation of somebody's imagination and so many of them have lived on like eternally after that. So, and it's just always fun to look at. I mean, I'm an art lover, same way, but it's never the same as me to walk through an art gallery as to walk through here and be able to talk to everybody and see the things that they remember from childhood. Okay, well, it looks like we're done. Uh, thanks for like having us. Absolutely. And it looks like we've seen everything except for the gift shop. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that means that we have to come back then. Of course, fantastic form is always welcome here at Jeppy's Entertainment Museum. Remember a great thing about a gift shop is that's where you start your collection today. So. Uh, okay. And could you tell us where you're located again? Absolutely. We're so convenient and so easy to find because we're right next to Camden Yards, literally. So we're on Camden Street, 301 West Camden Street in Baltimore, Maryland. And we're on the second floor of Camden Station. So literally, if you run the length of the warehouse, you see a brick building at the end, that's us. So we're right on the second floor. Our website is www.jeppysmuseum.com. And of course, you know, we have a Facebook page and we invite everybody to follow us because we're always doing all kinds of fun events here like we throw a tea party for kids in the spring we're doing a murder mystery dinner in the fall we have our zombie girl event um, around Mardi Gras time so there's always something fun going on and you know we just really invite everybody it's for any ages to come down and enjoy and we just love everybody to get a chance to see it so all right well thanks Gina we really appreciate it thanks so much for being here all right